I traveled all the way to one of the most remote and least populated countries in the world called Palau. It's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Join me as I take you on a cultural journey in my 195th country to see how many things I could get for $10. And watch until the very end to find out how to win a signed postcard from yours truly. Okay guys, let's dive in. What's up guys, my name is Drew Binsky and in this video I'm gonna show you what $10 can get you in this beautiful country that you've probably never heard of before called... Palau is a really special country, and if you've never heard of it before, then I'm happy to be the one to tell you all about it. The nation is a group of 340 coral and volcanic islands in the middle of the South Pacific, one of the most remote inhabited places on Earth. Believe it or not, Palau has just 18,000 residents and shrinking. To put that into perspective, they could all fit inside Madison Square Garden with 2,000 seats left to spare. Even more mind-boggling is that only 12,000 of these residents are ethnic Palauan. The rest are a majority Filipino, Chinese, Bangladeshi, or other Pacific Islanders. Palau's total land area is smaller than the city of Philadelphia, but the marine territory is bigger than Texas. That means a lot of open sea and Palau's claim to fame is to have the best scuba diving on earth. Trust me, it's true. All that being said, what really got me interested in Palau is the culture. I came to discover that Palau has a very complicated history of colonization, from the Spanish, to the Germans, to the Japanese, and then after World War II, to the Americans. That's why today, Palauan society is largely influenced from the United States. The education system, the currency, the language, and the overall life. In late 1994, Palau began its independence as a UN member state, but America still remains responsible for their military defense and they provide significant financial assistance. Knowing this, it'll make a little more sense as to why Palau feels like the most modernized and first world country in the Pacific. It's also crazy expensive, like everything. Not so good for the $10 challenge. Here in Palau, they use US dollars and things are pretty expensive here. So I'm gonna have to hunt extra hard to try to make this budget $10 video. But nonetheless, here we go. We're rolling up to the local market in Koror, which is once a week, every Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. Just a beautiful, lovely environment. Then I'm gonna try to buy a fruit or vegetable that I can snack on. This is the biggest market in Palau and it's so small, I love it. How much is uh, one pineapple? One dollar. One dollar for one pineapple? Yeah. Yes, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Got my pineapple, definitely gonna indulge in this later because it's gonna be sweet and delicious, like everywhere in the tropics. Fresh pineapple, can't go wrong. If you've ever seen my video in Papua New Guinea, then you've definitely heard about betel nut. It's a highly addictive, legal, and natural drug that is found across the Pacific Islands and Southeast Asia. You consume it by eating the seed of a small fruit and it acts as a stimulant, which means it speeds up the messages traveling between the brain and the body. In Palau, betel nut is deeply ingrained in their culture and I couldn't come here without diving in. Can I get one bag of this? Everybody's sold out. You're like the only one that have it. Thank you. I got my betel nut and now I gotta find someone here on the dock who I can chew it with, who can show me how to do it because in every country they chew it is different. And um, most likely it's gonna be an older male because those are the guys who I always see chewing betel nuts. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Drew. Yeah, my name is Alfred. How you doing, man? You from here? Yeah. You were here party last night. Look like a little bit hungover. I'm hungover? Yeah, no, I'm not. Party me. Oh, you were hungover. Alfred, see you around. Yeah. What's up, man? I got something for you. Oh, I've been looking for this one. Ah, uh, it's for you, bro. So how did you open this? It's a knife. A knife? Okay. Cut it straight like what? Okay. Yeah, better like that. I don't want to cut myself. There it is. Can you okay. remove a little bit of meat? What? Okay, so what did you put inside? What is this? This is salt or? Lime, lime. Lime, 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 yeah. lime, lime. It's this mysterious white powder that yeah. we put on it, okay? This is something they don't do in Papua New Guinea. They don't use the cigarettes. Yeah. Some people only chew this one and this one with the lips. With the paper on it? Yeah. That's pretty bad. No, put it right there too. 
You're chewing it. <laughs> Tastes very bad. Yeah. What do you experiment? But for me, I don't mind. <laughs> Most of the people in Palau, they always do that. After they do anything, or after fishing, or after eating. How many of these do you put in your mouth at once? Maybe more than 20 beer nut I chew in one day. And we never run out of food. We yeah. always run out of bitter nut in our island. Can I spit over there? Yeah. Oh. When you feel your mouth look like burning. It stings. Yeah. And that's all you do, you just chew it mm. and enjoy life. Yep. How does it make you feel when you take beetle nut? Make me feel strong. And what happens when you don't chew it? How do you feel? I feel very lazy. I feel like major rush. If you chew with the lips one time, sometimes you feel really like. That's how I feel. So, yeah. think I'm going to spit it out now? Yep. <laughs> Thank you for the beetle nut uh, tutorial. I headed back to the main part of town to meet up with a super cool friend who I will be adventuring with for the rest of this $10 challenge. I'm here with my local friend Sachi. Hey, Ali. Ali means... Hello. Ali means hello, Ali. And we got connected through Instagram. She's been living in Taiwan for a little bit, but she's born and raised in Palau. She's very Palauan and thankfully she's here at the moment. So we're going to be exploring Karor today. Tell me about Karor. What's Karor like? Karor is like the city center of Palau. Mm -hmm. So right here you'll get all the stores, all the markets. Everybody is basically based in Karor City. So we'll get to see a lot. From being overseas for a little bit, when you come back here, how does it feel? It feels like home, as cliche as that sounds, but I just feel like I breathe easier, I'm more comfortable, my guards are down. And everywhere I look, I see family or friends. So I just feel safe. Absolutely. So. At the moment, I'm feeling a little bit hungry and I'm shooting a $10 video, which means I want to try to get some good local food. So what do you have in mind for that? Yano's. What is Yano's? Yano's is like a local market that we have here. It's a family run and it's been in business since like the 40s, so. If that's what she says, then Yano's it is. We're at Yano's local market. All local food, all made fresh daily. And it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Go for it. When in Palau, I think it's necessary to eat fish. But how much is one fried fish? $3. Okay, the smallest one? How much uh, do you think? $2. Okay. Can we do one small fish? Like the one red snapper? Yeah, the smallest one. That's 0.3. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This looks really interesting. What is this in my hand? This is called the Spam Musubi. So it's uh, Japanese Hawaiian influenced in Palau, but this is like everybody's <laughs> daily breakfast on the go. You just go to the store, pop in, grab a musubi and head out. What's in it? Um, it's spam with egg and seaweed wrapper with rice. Amazing. Okay. Awesome. You think we should eat it with our fingers? Yeah, probably. You want to eat it with your fingers? Yeah. Yes. Uh, How much is it? It's $3. There you go, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. This is finadeni sauce. I thought it was soy sauce. It's Yeah, it's, a, it's soy sauce mixed with a little vinegar, a little salt and some onions. Some, put, some people put in spice. Finadeni is actually from Guam, I think. It's oh my god, that smells really good. Yeah. Alright, it's all worth it for this sauce right here, guys. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna split this musubi so we can both try. Sure. Solid. This will fill you up. Mm -hmm. It's cheap, it's tasty, and it's convenient. And packed with calories. I don't usually eat spam, but you know, when it comes in this form, red snapper, this is uh, all over the seas of Palau. How do you, you just dive in or what? Yeah, you just go and just dive in. in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You can try it without the finadeni first so you get that natural taste. And it looks crunchy. Wow. Like, no joke, <laughs> this is really fresh. How is that? Like, for real, it's good. It tastes like it was just caught yesterday. Yeah. Maybe even this morning. Maybe even this morning. All right, trying it with the finadeni sauce. Now it's really Palauan. Oh man. Mmm. <laughs> the secret sauce. It's kind of like soy sauce, like vinegary, but there's some something else going on yep. in there. It's a secret ingredient. I think that the second most delicious part of the fish is the eyeball. And you have two, right? So we can each have one. Great, show me how to do it. All right, so you kind of just Go for it. Just pick it out of its skull. <laughs> That's an eyeball right there. All right, I'm gonna just dip it in some finadeni. Eyeballs. Mm, this one's a little tough. <laughs> a lot tough to chew through. Dip it in the sauce mm -hmm. and go. 
Not bad at all. Yeah, it's nothing too outrageous. It just tastes like the meat of the fish, honestly. Mm -hmm. Guys, quickly, a 30 second intermission. I just picked up these 10 awesome postcards from a souvenir shop here in Palau. You can see it's the Rock Islands, the most iconic landmark here, and they can be yours. All you have to do to win is to join my free travel email newsletter, which I send twice a month. The link is down low in the description, as well as follow me on Instagram at Drubinsky, where I share live updates behind the scenes from my travels around the world. And I'm choosing the winners in exactly 24 hours from now. I will be writing a personalized message from yours truly shipped worldwide to your inbox, to your email. So good luck. And that is all. Back to the story. Even though minimum wage is $3.50 an hour and things are really expensive, I've been really surprised to notice that there are no homeless people. The reason why is because there's a huge sense of family and community and everyone looks after each other. It's very deeply rooted in our culture to give what you can when you when you have it so that when you are in need yourself, they will provide for you whatever they have. And it's that spirit of sharing and giving that is the reason why probably we don't have any homeless people because even the people you see walking on the street, they have homes, they have appliances, they have furniture, they have food. They might be done on their luck because they don't have a job or maybe an illness prevented them from wow. sustaining a employment. But if they're in need, they can go to their aunt, their uncle, their cousin, and they'll obviously you'll give fish. Uh, one of the Palauan sayings is like, you should never be greedy with food. And that's really the spirit. It's, it's not so much what you have as a meal, but it's the spirit of giving. You want people to make sure that they're well fed and they're healthy. There's a huge sense of family and community in Palau, and you can see it everywhere. Like when we're walking down the street, Sachi's like, oh, that's my brother's uncle, that's my second cousin. That's, it's like, <laughs> You can't go anywhere in this country without seeing someone. Yes, definitely. And so people really just look after each other and that's something that I've never experienced growing up where I came from. Everybody's on their own. When you come from a big city in the US or any big city in the world, right. you're just on your own. You gotta be independent. But here, people, you'll never be able to be poor because your family won't let you. It was finally time for us to leave the main island and head to another island in Palau that I have a lot to tell you about on a personal level. This story is about to take a turn and I hope you are ready for it. We're taking the plane down to Peleliu because we've taken so many boats so far on this trip and I feel like flying would be a much better alternative to see something different on the way. Our life is in your hands right now. While the airplane ride was nothing short of spectacular, it comes with a heavy heart to arrive in Peleliu. I have known about Peleliu since I was a little kid because my grandpa Jack always told me about it. He was a very proud Marine who fought in World War II. Although he was stationed in the Philippines for two years, he was called down to Peleliu to take part in one of the bloodiest battles in the Pacific where almost 10,000 lives were taken. My grandpa told me harrowing stories of what it was like to arrive on Orange Beach and the scenes that he witnessed with his own two eyes. Before he passed away peacefully a few months ago, he told me details about his experience in Peleliu, the place where he got shot in the leg nearby a three-story building that he recalled was some Japanese headquarters. We were there for about 24 hours. And what, what do you remember from those 24 hours? What I remember was that we laid up about 500 yards from the main building by the shore and uh, we were marched to the, the area where they had a uh, building. That was the very first place I visited, and it was an out-of-body experience to stand there and imagine my grandfather at 19 years old fighting for his country. He told me he was here for like the worst, the worst of the worst, and he saw many things that no human should see. And he actually had a sword that he showed me that was taken out of a Japanese soldier and it still has blood on it. And I remember that as a kid. He told me about that and he got it in Peleliu, which is just bizarre to think about. I mean, this is my grandpa. This is just two generations ahead of me. Lived a great life, was a true American hero, honestly. Marine, businessman, family man, father, grandfather, great grandfather. It's really special to be here. The entire island of Peleliu today is basically a museum with artillery, relics, and untouched pieces left over from the war. You can walk around the trails and find items like a spent shell that was shot and left in its original spot 80-some uh, years ago. You really get to appreciate the historical context of an item when you see it out there yeah. in its environment. Just a few months ago, Grandpa was telling me before he passed away, his stories in Peleliu, and he remembered being in this building where he got shot in the knee. 
And I believe this is the building. I can only imagine what it was like to be here. At least before he passed, I got to tell him I'm coming here and I'm gonna trace his footsteps, so at least he knows that. This place is eerie, it's haunting. It's pretty crazy to be up here, walking through the forest and just hearing about all these stories of the past and just like seeing the relics that are left behind. That's like the, the most real part where you see it and you just pick up like a bottle and it's literally left as it was. Nobody has taken it. Everything is left almost 80 years. I'm standing on Orange Beach in Peleliu on the southern part of the island. And this is where in August 1944, thousands of US Marines arrived here during low tide. And there were already about 12,000 Japanese soldiers right here where I'm standing. And they were ducking for cover when they arrived. It's a scene that I've heard about, I've read about, and I just saw pictures about. And to stand here right now is very tough, honestly, to imagine what my grandfather and his peers went through. All of these heavy feelings aside, there's still about 600 people living in Peleliu today who are so friendly and introduced me to a more unique side of Palawan culture that wasn't so present on the mainland. Sachi is originally from Peleliu, so she was able to give me a pretty cool insider perspective on the lifestyle and cuisine on the island. As we were wandering around, I came across this beautiful old lady who was making baskets with her bare hands. My curiosity led the way from here. This woman, she's actually from my village as well, Nardalo. Her first name is Sasako. Ali. So, what'd she say? Oh, so like, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> she'll pick up this nut and then she'll come and she'll break it. So when you break it open, it kind of looks like this, like a mini cassava, but it's actually a nut. And from this, you can just eat it naturally, like with the peel. Some people take off the peel as well. It looks like a macadamia nut. Yeah. Delicious. And it's super high in protein. Mm. That's really good. She also weaves these baskets that you see right behind her over here. Wow, it's so beautiful. How much does that cost? It's a dollar a basket, but what? Uh, but she's offering to give it to you for free. So she says, go ahead and pick the one that you like the most. I know with the elderly in, in the Pacific and in most of Asia, actually, you, you always respect the elders and you do what they say. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I need a kind of a smaller one because I'm going to bring it home with me. This is probably the smallest one. Oh. Okay, hold on. She wants oh. you to take a special one from inside the house. This is a nice size, right? Oh, that's a perfect size. Okay. But that's like her basket. Yes, but she's giving it to me. So sweet of her. And then you can carry it from the top or you can carry it from the bottom. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is for you. Five dollars. Thank you. Many people in the world, they've never heard of Palau. So is there anything she wants to say about her country to people that would watch this video? So she says that a lot of the sites, the historical sites and the monuments are kind of kept as it is and that it's such a historical um, island. And she says to the people around the world that yes, you are most welcome to come in and visit and come see her as well. Thank you. Bye bye. That was a pleasure meeting her. She's yes. so sweet. So sweet. So humble. And that's kind of how the the vibe of a typical Palawan auntie is. She will take the best one even if it's her own. Yeah, this was in her house. Like yeah. we went inside of her house to grab this and she gave it to me and yeah. I'm gonna bring this home. What an adventure my first few days have been across Palau and thank you so much for joining. For me, it was a roller coaster of emotions, but in the end, it all comes down to humanity. And Palauans are some of the most hospitable and respectful people I've met in a very long time. This country is special and I can't wait to see more over the next 10 days. But to wrap up this video, I was able to purchase a pineapple, a sack of betel nut, a local plate of fish, and a handmade basket for exactly $10. And that, my friends, is what $10 can get you in this incredible country called Palau. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. I always say that at the end of my stories, but it's the truth. You guys are the best. You keep me going. I really appreciate it. Lots more incredible content coming from Palau. This is truly a gem of a country. Hit me up on Instagram to follow my trip in real time. At Rubinsky. I'm posting a lot of really cool stuff there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week for the next video. Peace!
I'm Drew Binsky and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more adventures from every country and I also have a second channel where I share the most inspiring people stories around the world. Also, if you want to become a better traveler and save money, I'm offering the first chapter of my travel hacking course for free. Just click that link in the middle down below. Until next time guys, stay safe, be spontaneous, and just go.